so far, no matter how near. Can't I have just one more Pop-Tart? Forever stuck to this damn chair. And something else matters. Another taking a closer look, pick a movie and do a recap on it, discuss it, uh, we liked it or not. And if we've read up on any backstories, try to share it with you. And uh, I guess I picked this one. It's a uh, sports movie called North Dallas 40 with Nick Nolte, Mac Davis, and that's as far as I know the actors. <laughs> um, but it's uh, to give a little backstory, it's based on a book by a receiver from the Cowboys in the 60s. His name was Peter Gitt. And uh, after his football days, he wrote a book, and this is the one he wrote. Um, the book is uh, it's pretty graphic. Um, and, you know, it's, it's definitely hard to read some parts. But the basis of the story is it's a aging receiver. And if you know anything about the game of football, especially in the 60s and the 70s, it was a barbaric game. You know, if you lasted 10 years, you were very lucky. Well, they didn't have all the safety equipment. No, and it was a it was it was it was a game of men. Yeah. It was a game of men. But uh, the start of the movie, it's uh, Nick Nolte. Again, he's playing the Peter Gint character, I guess you'd say. And uh, it starts basically he wakes up after a football game and you could just tell he's in pain. Like he wakes up, there's blood on the pillow. He's got beer bottles all over the place, empty pill bottles, you know, sitting up is a chore, standing up is a chore. <laughs> you know, there's a scene he's, he tries to stand up and, and I, I think I've had mornings where yeah, I've tried good. to stand up like, like me. that. And, you know, he's walking, he's hobbling, there's flashbacks to the, <laughs> the, the game, you know, the night before. Um, and he gets to the kitchen and finds some pain pillar, and it almost like he's like, oh, <laughs> and uh, and he, he's well, this character shouldn't be even more than in his what mid thirties though too. Right? Yeah, but it it is it, like I said, it's a grueling game. Yeah, and that honestly was one of the true things about Peter Gates character. He he had a lot of injuries in his career. I've read up on him. <laughs> But uh, his star quarterback and the two offensive linemen show up sort of unexpectedly. When I say unexpectedly, they just barge on in. They, they go hunting. And that's honestly, that's really the first part of the book. That's like where the book starts, they're walking through the woods trying to, trying to kill some. And, but basically, they're shooting around, they're drinking, you know, just trying to blow off steam. And, you know, Nick Nolte and Mac Davis talking back and forth about the game and this and that. And, you know, it comes to the point where the, the offensive of lineman, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> like, Jesus. But um, then it goes to the party scene. And that's one of the more difficult parts of the book to read because there's some stuff going in there that shouldn't go they on. They partied hard. Yeah. And uh, that, from what I understand, that was true. You had a lot of uh, big Texas oil company men that liked to hobnodge with the players. So they got sure. these big parties at these houses. Yeah. And one of my, you know, one of the favorite things of the movie is that, you know, Nolte's there, but he almost doesn't want to be there. Right. You know, and he's kind of hanging around. They're, they're beautiful. Hey, they're Bob. How you doing? How you doing, Elliot? 
he's like watching the the party and it's out of hand in some places Yeah. He's a sort of passive spectator. Just yeah. Just sitting there. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden he locks eyes with a female, which her name is Charlotte. But, uh, you know, they, they start talking and, and he's, he's sort of smitten by her. You mean it gets worse? Uh, it definitely gets different. See, alcohol and fear makes for a good combination. Fear? Mm-hmm. What are they afraid of? Falling on their asses in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, she wants to leave because she just totally turned off by this party. She she doesn't even know why she came. Basically, and it's a great scene. Like, uh, there's a long shot of him walking out to the pool, and there's a bonfire. And Mac Davis comes and tells him, like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Come on, it seemed like a good idea, or whatever." And something like, you know, don't aggravate him. Let him have what he wants. And Nick tells him, "What do you mean? What about what I want?" And I think, man, he's a baby for God's sake. <laughs> But, uh, no, it's a great scene. And then it's still shot. Nick Nolte's kind of sitting by the fire, and he's smoking a marijuana cigarette. And you see Mac Davis walk. It's a long shot. So it's, it's like shots like that always fascinate me, where it's long, it's not cut it. But anyway, as the movie progress, he, that night, finds out where the girl lives, goes to see her. And as a great gentleman, he falls asleep on a couch, even though she says not to. And uh, but and then some of his favorite scenes, especially if you're a football fan, like he's going to meet the head coach at the owner's building, his place of business. Right. And he sits down with uh, your favorite person from Apocalypse oh, Now. Oh, dude, G.D. Spradlin, G.D. man. Spratton. And he's plays the coach. And then uh, what's his name? Gary the Mustache. He's the brother of the owner. Are you talking about Dabney Coleman? Yeah. Nine to five. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then, the, you know, the owner, too, he was in SWAT, I think it was. Uh, they, oh, I thought Spradlin was, even though he wasn't the owner, he was the... Uh... He was the brother of the owner. Oh, okay. Well, Spradlin, yeah. No, Spradlin was the head coach. Are we talking about Apocalypse Now? Yeah. Yeah. You had the owner who had like the kind of reddish hair, older guy. Oh, okay. He was in SWAT, the series. No, I'd have to... That one, I, I know... Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But basically, and this is really parallel to what the Cowboys were doing in the 60s. They... Heavily relied on computers, even though it, it, like they were the first teams to follow computers. It just wasn't really reliable because you're talking about computer technology in the 60s. You know, yeah. computers took a whole room up. Yeah. And but basically telling Nick Nolte, you've got to change. You've got to adapt to sitting on the bench. And Nolte's like, I can't. But they have a pretty good scene there. And Nick Nolte walks out and runs into Coleman and yeah. his wife or well, i think it's his girlfriend is, yeah who is nolte's mistress right, right, so right, there's a right. whole little triangle there right. um he goes to see her I, I love the scene in the morning you know where she's like i'm gonna have breakfast and he's well i'm gonna have whatever you're having she's like, well i'm having chocolate pudding oh wait a <laughs> but uh yeah it's a whole back and forth he's like do you got bacon you got eggs you got this <laughs> nope <laughs> nope <laughs> but um so and then i think it cuts to they're at a film and they're watching the previous game and all that stuff fascinates me because it's, I'm sure that's exactly how it was in, in sport. And they go over the game, they go over plays that were messed up. There's a play that, uh, uh Mac Davis sounds like, this is where you screwed up. And they go, no, you screwed up. He said, you changed the plays. I didn't change the plays. You brought it in. And then Mac just cover for me. But, uh, that's all great. They end up cutting an offensive lineman for messing up. There's a whole dramatic scene. He's like, Oh, will you hang back? We got to talk to you for a sec. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but it's, it's basically the whole movie's a preparation for a big game. And it's not really, I would say accurate as far as how an NFL season goes, because it sounds like they're getting ready for the Super Bowl. But they, you know, and we'll get to that in a sec. Yeah, uh, creative license. Yeah, so, you know, they practice, and, and it's kind of weird because they're practicing in a basketball, a basketball court, which to me is, that is just accidents waiting to happen. You're going to lose all your players, <laughs> which, of course, happens. Nick Nolte catches a pass, and he gets hit, and he falls on the on the uh, thing and bangs his shoulder and his knee, and now he's even worse shaped than when he started. Feels pretty swollen. Just work that knee. Who was the, who was the, so who was uh, 
who did he play? I know who the actor is. Charles Dern. He said, five minutes. Yeah, he's the uh, assistant <coughs> coach to your buddy from Apocalypse Now. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, and uh, there's a great scene. Uh, one of the uh, film sets, this rookie linebacker falls asleep, and he gets an eraser, and he just throws it at him. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's preparation. And you see, you can. there's a very powerful scene to me where he's dating this girl now they're together which seems kind of fast because it's only been a few days but <laughs> anyway um they're going uh you know she hears him she's he's not in the bed anymore she she pokes her head there and he's just in pain you know he's cracking his back trying to get better and all the takes these pain pills and crawling next to her and, and you can tell he didn't sleep and the next morning she's like how'd you sleep he's oh i slept great and so they're getting ready for the game um, one of the great scenes is he's driving in the country to her and he's like, this is his land. He's going to build his houses and stuff. And she's like, how long have you been working on this? Oh, about eight years or something, three years. And, uh, more sent to, you know, shows up the game where they're getting preparation. And that's also one of my favorite parts. They're getting taped up and they're, you know, trying to get in the right mindset. Five minutes. How long coach? Five. Fuck you. But uh, it also was pretty, you know, what happened back then. You were hurt, you know, you had to be really hurt to miss a game. If, you know, you were like, they would just shoot you up. They would numb your knee and you just go. And Nick Nolte's knee was bothering him. He shot it up so yeah. he could play. Well, they were using him so another player would shoot his leg up. And anyway, so they get ready for the game. They go out there and... Oh, Let's go kill those cocksuckers! They're getting ready for this game. And Nick Nolte's supposed to start, and right before the game starts, uh, he comes up to him and says, oh, I'm starting this guy, but you just be ready. He'll be coming up. He says, but there is some great ones in there, you know. Joe Bob, when you get through titty blocking weeks, don't you hit the fucker, huh? Why don't you go and fuck yourself? You just hang on to the ball, Belfer. We'll take care of up front. Fuck you, psycho. Just try to get that fucking ball to cross the line of scrimmage, you asshole. Just hold on the ball. Shut the fuck up. Nobody talks in this fucking huddle except me. Oh, so they get down to about, I think, 30 seconds left. All right, two plays, back to back. No huddle. Red right 76, come back with red right 79. Bill? You throw a partner out, can't you? Second slab, and then they call these iconic play. Nick Nolte actually worked out as a receiver, so you see him run the routes, catch the passes. A worse shape than they were before, Ross. They have got only 16 seconds left, but they are 28 yards away from the score. First and 20 as Maxwell sets them up. The clock does not start now until the snap is made. Elliott is in motion to the right. Maxwell back to pass. He's going to Elliott. It is complete at about the 15 yard line. But the clock is running. They're only down by seven. Uh, throw a pass, Nick Nolte catches it. Uh, they're a point away from tying it, but as Hollywood and creative license, somehow you miss the extra point. <laughs> Doggone it. So it's over. They said their season's over, but then they're going to play next week. So that's what's kind of confusing. But anyway, so Nick Nolte goes back home. He has a great scene with uh, his girl talking about this and that. And then he's like, I got to meet with the owners. And this is probably one of the best scenes where they're basically trying to get him in trouble, you know, hey, you can't, you know, you know, you can't do pot, you know, you can't be doing this and that. And they basically want to suspend it yeah. without paying his contract. Bill, you have the best hands in football. But there's a lot more to this business than ability. No, 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 B.A., hey, you're wrong. You're wrong because it is ability. It is what I can do with these hands. And that's why I play the game. And that's what that whole scene is. But it's just great back and forth. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things we skipped over is one time Nick Nolte goes home and his house is tore up. 
Well, come to find out, it's this guy they paid like a private investigator to try to find stuff so they could suspend him. So instead of suspending, Nick Nolte just basically says he quits and walks away. Yeah, it's time to put away childish things. Yes, that was that. a great that was a great scene. I love the scene at the end, him and Mac Davis talk back and forth for a bit. They suspend you. He said, Did you mention my name? He's like, There's no reason to bring you into this. Because in uh, the the meeting they're talking about the pool scene. He said he was observed smoking a marijuana cigarette with an unidentified white male Caucasian. He's like, what the hell do you mean a white identity? You know who it was. Who was it? They would say, he's like, some investigator. Because he was an MVP for him. Yes. He was the star of the it's team. politics. Nick Dolte was expendable. Right. No pun intended. But anyway, that's basically the gist of the movie. And uh, I remember watching that with my dad. And I, I always loved it from the beginning. And uh, uh, you know, skipped over a part where they're in the, uh, this is time to bust in the old medicine cabinet. <laughs> and they're like, you like codeine and all that. So, yeah, but I love the movie. It's one of my all-time favorites. And that's, that's what I think. Yeah, great film. Yeah. Great film. So, uh, it is definitely high up there. If you're a sports fan, you like sports fan. Or if you like just the grittiness of films, check this one out. This this is definitely great. It's got comedy in it. It's got a little bit of drama, a little bit of romance. I mean, not much. But it's it's a sports movie. Yeah, I loved it since the first time I saw it. Showed it to me. I think we're going to watch it now. We're going to go watch it again. We'll see you later. Hey, Poot. Yeah. 